All right, Mark Lee from Overthinking It, and I'm here at New York Comic Con with... Ian Desher, author of William Shakespeare's Star Wars. What is William Shakespeare's Star Wars? So it's the Star Wars films uh, rewritten as though they are plays by Shakespeare. So in, in five acts, in iambic pentameter, the whole deal. So um, I wanted to get a sense, sort of big picture-wise, um, to what extent do you feel like adapting Star Wars into Shakespeare is a really natural fit or a bit of a stretch, or maybe a little bit of both? Well, it's a natural fit in that... Uh, it's the kind of story that Shakespeare would probably be telling today if he were alive, right? So it's it's the story with these grand themes of young people fulfilling their destinies and, uh, you know, good versus evil and big villains and larger-than-life heroes and all the sorts of things that we find in Shakespeare's plays also. The way in which it's a stretch is that, of course, you know, Shakespeare in the 16th century wouldn't be writing about blasters and lightsabers. Yeah. So um, one of the things we're curious about is your process for doing this and the adaptation. Because there's a lot of things that... When you think about how to adapt Star Wars into a Shakespearean play, it would be very difficult to do, like the uh, trench run, the Battle of Yavin, and attacking the Death Star. What were your different techniques you, you used to translate that into, uh, into this format? Yeah, so one of the first questions at the beginning was just, you know, uh, are we going to talk about blasters and lightsabers, or am I going to, you know, change that in some way to, like, crossbows and swords or something like that? Uh, I decided that that needed to stay true to Star Wars. Some of those, uh, the action sequences, uh, I mean, in the first book, I sort of heavily relied on using a chorus to come in and describe what's going on, uh, like Shakespeare did in Henry V. Um, also started having... Uh, just characters describing what's going on and that sort of thing, which is also another thing that Shakespeare did a lot. So uh, the things like the Death Star battles, in terms of, you know, if this were actually being staged or something, would really be the challenging parts, I think. I mean, it would be a challenge. I had in mind actors who had, like, a basically wearing a suit of sorts with, like, the, the wings of their fighters coming out from the sides of them. Yeah, that's kind of what I pictured when I pictured the pod race in, uh, in The Phantom uh, Menace. Yeah, so, but it could work absolutely with the Death Star scenes, too. Ian, you have degrees in music, divinity, and ethics. Was any of that at all useful in writing your Shakespeare and Star Wars adaptations? I mean, a little bit here and there, maybe. I like to think that the fact that I studied music helps with iambic pentameter. It gives me an appreciation for the rhythm. But certainly the fact that I did a PhD, you know, meant that I knew what it was to take on a big writing project and be able to finish it and get to the end of it, you know, uh, so th that helped. And I mean, in terms of the theological stuff, the ethical stuff, you know, there are a few moments, I would say, sprinkled in throughout the books, um, you know, where that's where I sort of get to play with that a little bit, but not a ton. I, I think the overall tone is that you are a scholar, you are a man of letters, and therefore an appreciator of the bard. Well, thank you, and I, I, uh, I do think that's probably true. I love language and trying to sort of honor Shakespeare through these, this mashup. And then my last question, of course, episodes 7, 8, and 9 are coming out, and as well as more Star Wars movies. Will they also get Shakespearean adaptations? Uh, the truthful answer is I don't know yet, um, but I'm hopeful. We'll see. Great. Ian, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.